Good evening. As someone who's worked in the television business for most of her life, there is one job that stands out on my resume. I have the distinction of being the worst assistant Geraldine Laybourne has ever had. <laughs> but unlike many bosses who would have fired me for my lack of typing and filing skills, Jerry promoted me and kept promoting me and gave me the greatest start in what became my life's work. And I wasn't the only lucky one. There are many Nickelodeon graduates who've gone on to do amazing work in the entertainment industry, and millions of kids who have Jerry to thank for countless hours of high quality entertainment and a world of fun built just for them. Jerry has the innate ability to cultivate people, talent, programming, and networks. She has an instinct for how creative work will be consumed and an uncanny talent for sculpting how that work is both created and distributed. But beyond natural talent, her unmatched success is predicated on a radical superpower. She likes to ask questions, the very best questions, the answers to which have propelled her to solve some of the biggest challenges facing brands and their audiences. She has always been a disruptor, on a mission, on a quest to create a close and meaningful relationship with the audience and the people around her. Under her leadership, Nickelodeon grew into a global billion dollar business and a brand with a permanent place in the zeitgeist. Nickelodeon made a set of promises to its audience, and Jerry made sure that everyone kept them. Jerry's work continued at Disney as president of the Disney ABC Cable Group and ABC Saturday Morning, before eventually launching her own media brand, the Oxygen Network, with fellow Television Academy Hall of Fame members, Oprah Winfrey and Marcy Carsey. Being arguably the most successful executive in the medium's history is reason enough for Jerry's induction into the Television Academy Hall of Fame. But her legacy reaches beyond her own account accomplishments. It reaches into the accomplishments of women she has mentored and the careers she has fostered. When approached by young women hoping for advice, Jerry began inviting them on her morning walks where she would mentor and guide them. This act of generosity has grown into what is now known as the Global Mentoring Walks, where in over 80 countries worldwide, successful women of all disciplines give back to their communities by fostering the next generation of female representation in the workforce. It is with great love and admiration that I now induct my mentor and dear friend, Geraldine Laybourne into the Television Academy Hall of Fame. Thank you so much. Usually, Ann and I wear the same color. I don't know what's <laughs> going on tonight. And I pray that my kids and my grandkids all get to have a partner like Ann Sweeney. We grew up in this business together. I learned more from her than she ever learned from me. And we had each other's back. And we actually decided we were gonna help women get ahead in television. And we had a secret society, which was called the Power Chicks. <laughs> and the Power Chicks would just go out drinking when anything good would happen <laughs> for another woman. And our friends, our male friends would say, what do you Power Chicks do? Do you have an agenda? No, we have no agenda. We just want to celebrate each other. So I feel like, you know, celebrating Anne 
and all of the wonderful creative people that I got to work with, some of whom are here tonight. It's astonishing. But anyway, let me start my speech. Um, when I was three, two men came to our little house on Quarry Lane with a gigantic wooden piece of furniture and plugged it in. My mother said, well, hello, television. And just as she said that, the screen lit up and the announcer said back to her, hello out there in television land. Wow, I had a huge imagination, but I thought, whoa, I see TV, TV sees me. So naturally, I dressed up in my very best <laughs> for my hero, Hopalong Cassidy, and sat cross-legged in front of the TV, smiling as wide as I could, hoping he would see me. I loved TV. I begged my mom, spin me around. Please hurl me into television land. When I joined Nickelodeon, we had no money, no audience, no subscribers. Even if we had wanted, we could not have followed the tried and true path to high ratings. As Anne said, we were disruptive and we were disruptors. Professionals told us kids will only watch cartoons, program only to boys, girls will watch anything, kids will never watch the news, preschoolers can't follow stories, they don't care about the quality of the writing, kids love toys made into TV. No. We threw conventional wisdom out on its ear, but we had a luxury. No ratings, no expectations, and nothing to lose. We had just one boss, kids. My own kids were quite bossy and extremely <laughs> frank. Once 10-year-old Sam saw the first episodes of Turkey TV, he burst out, oh, mom, you will never work in television again. <laughs> I'm grateful that a creator is back at the helm of Nickelodeon, Brian Robbins. He understands that kids and families deserve innovation and fun and creators who respect them and yes, creators who love them. That's really the secret to Nickelodeon's success. We loved our audience. They could feel it and they loved us back. Years later, when Marcy Carsey and I got together to discuss doing a cable network for young women, we asked my daughter, Emmy, who was then 23, exactly our target audience, to write a white paper. She asked us to create a space where women do not have to shrink to fit, where woman, women could find their own humor, where women, sorry, where women could feel important and be seen. I am a disruptor, I admit it. These days, I'm working on a project designed to address a major key to ending poverty, high quality early learning. Of course, it's about kids. And together with several Vassar College professors and community leaders in Poughkeepsie, New York, we're creating a program called Day One Early Learning Community that we hope will be a model for New York State and beyond. One important goal we have is to train teachers and pay them a wage that respects them. Imagine what we can do if we set an environment where children learn through play, which of course is the brain's very favorite way to learn. Actually, creating an environment where people feel safe to play is probably the big secret to the success of my career. And I've had such wonderful people to play with. My supportive family here is here tonight. My husband, Kit, Sam, Heron, Skender, Lulit, Emmy, Greg, 
Ellie and Rex, and to all the wonderful executives and creators. I won't list them all now. We'd be here all night. But I do want to say, Bob, thank you for my time trying to invent things with you. But instead, I will simply stand here filled with gratitude, all dressed up, and smiling at you like crazy. Thank you all for spinning me into television land for once and for all. Thank you.